Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. And today's video, I wanted to show you how to create this kind of chromey effect when you're illustrating your comics and things. Uh, you can see I'm doing it a little bit over here too on this character. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and show you what I would do when trying to make these little chrome kind of reflection effects like you see on our armor over here. So first off, I want to add a new um, layer over here. Uh, not layer, sorry, page, panel, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to add a circle real quick. Let's just do it. Let's do it with this tool, I guess. An ellipse tool. Hold shift, draw out a circle. That line's a little thick for the edge, but yeah, you know what? Let me make that a little bit thinner. Uh, all you do is you take your brush size down, use the bracket keys to size that down. Grab here, hold shift. Or you know what? No, I guess over here you would do it here. Okay. So right there. Hold shift. And that's too light. We're getting closer though. Yeah, that's better. Maybe even a tad bigger right there. Okay, there we go. So the reason why I want to show you first on a circle is because everything should be kind of simplified, I guess, at first. And then you can start to envision it around more complex areas. Uh, so I would say first get your effects down on a circle. Kind of reminds me in 3D too how they always give you this, this preview of something on a circle and then you apply that effect onto your uh, the rest of your character or whatever you're working on. So it, it kind of resembles that same concept. So make everything work first on a basic shape whether it be a circle or a square and then uh, take it from there and you can elaborate and get all fancy smancy with it. So okay, so first off, if we were to define our light source, we're gonna end up with something like, like this, all right? So there's obviously a big light source right here. Um, and, and on Chrome objects, you, you do kind of even draw a secondary kind of highlight like this, but we'll worry about that in a bit. Um, so there's a couple ways to approach this. You can either do your light source like this, which kind of looks like the light is more to the face of the object and it's running down. That's why it creates a shape, this like moon shape. Uh, or you could kind of look at it like it rounds up like this. And if you're doing that, then it means your light source is behind uh, the circle a little bit more, but it's still bleeding over to this point. So you just have to decide where your light source is, but this effect that I'm going to show you will work either way. I just want to show you that don't think of the circle as just always doing this half moon shape because there's times when the light source will actually appear to be more like this. Okay, so that's the first portion of this mini lesson. Okay, so now let's take this to blue line and let's add another one over top. I'll just use this as a reference point. And let's say that, okay, we've got this chromey look. Now, the thing I always picture with, with a chrome effect, uh, one of the people I like to study that, that just does the most amazing chrome type look as far as painting and just in general is uh, Soriyama. His, his chrome effects are just, you know, amazing. And that's obviously what he's popular for. Uh, so I really like to study his work. And one of the things I've always noticed with his and, and artists that do it really well, uh, equally as well like him, is that they're a combination of kind of swirling uh, flowing lines and with varying degrees of thickness. So let's do like say nice heavy line here and that, you know I'm still sketching I'm still trying to figure this out before I take this to uh, some kind of finality here but so I'm just you know playing around with these lines I want to get this effect that our shape is rounding uh, into some kind of 3D space the other thing to keep in mind when doing uh, chrome and uh, type of reflective effects is that essentially you're just recreating the idea that it's reflecting off its uh, surfaces. The things around it are reflecting off of this item. So what you're seeing when you see this swirling lines and these horizon effects, or that's exactly what they are, they're horizon effects. Um, so you're not just seeing these swirling lines that are, I don't know, just randomly happening you have to envision that they're reflecting the outer areas around them. 
So, you know, there's a lot of complexities that are involved in that if you're trying to do an advanced scene and you want to do some stuff like, uh, you know, MC Escher's, you know, reflectivity effects where they were very drawn out and you could see entire backgrounds and distortions of characters and stuff like that. Uh, this is just going to be a basic approach to that. So I'm getting some reflective variations of lines. Uh, if I wanted to get a little more intricate, I could even start thinking, okay, is there some kind of, you know, city silhouette in this? And I could start painting that in, you know, you can, you can start imagining what, what the distortion uh, of whatever it is in this is doing, but we're not going to worry about that. Like I said, it's going to be a very basic approach to how I would do it in comics. Okay, so another thing that brings this out is also some line weight. Don't forget the uh, the line weight. It's also important to direct the shapes. So I'll put this heavier line on the one side here. Something like this. Uh, another thing that you can do to make it look like the the highlight is stronger up here is I'll convert this to white. I'll just do a couple little line breaks in that line up here. And that's telling me my highlight's right about there somewhere. So a little heavier line weight here, line break up there, gives us the effect that we're, you know, filling in some light source. The other thing I like to do when, when doing this type of stuff is... Some nice, uh, uh, let me see, some uh, cross hatching or just some line work. So I envision that this portion of the orb or sphere, whatever it is, is the darkest area. So down here, I'm just going to darken in and add some, some uh, feathered lines. And keep in mind, I explain this in each video, but I always have people that comment and go, How are you getting lines like that? Uh, if you notice, you should be able to tell by watching the video, I'm actually feathering the line. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like eight pulls there, and I actually distort it in the middle there. Uh, sometimes I'll just roll with it, other times I'll control Z back and fix it. I'm just going to roll with it because this is still the sketch anyways. I can fix this uh, in any kind of finish work that I'm going to do. But see how I'm feathering those lines. So these are a series of lines. This isn't just one line. Uh, now you can also practice doing your feathered lines like this where you go, let's try it, uh, I don't do this, but start real heavy and then slowly let off. See, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you can get good at it. You can get good at anything you practice. Or light and then apply pressure. Maybe that would be better for me the way that I do my pulls, but I don't, I don't like that look. It's just not the way that I draw. So I feather my lines. Uh, in turn, I'll probably develop carpal tunnel sooner than the next guy, but oh well, that's just the way that I do it. So uh, then if you want to cross hatch it, and you know, I had some questions about cross hatching. Cross hatching is just another way to add uh, another level of tone. So if I picture that my light source or lack of light source, my darkness is darker there and maybe around this edge, then I just cross hatch a little bit just to add that level of darkness. If I picture that this area is lighter, I can erase some of these lines back, or in this case, I'll just flip to white. Whoop, thought I was. And, you know, maybe I just cross hatch with white right here to show that there's a little bit lighter area there. So that's really all cross hatching is. I mean, it, it gets into another level of, you know, where you just want stylized textures and effects in your work. So it's not just, uh, line variation or uh, tonal value, but I predominantly, I just think of it as tone, you know, tonal value. So you're just trying to add more depth to your creation and some, some varying levels of tonal um, degree to it. So just my interpretation. Okay, so now say that this is, is going in the direction I want it to. It still looks a little bit boring. Um, Sometimes it's the way that you leave certain gaps of the white that really sell it. Um, so I'll usually practice a couple of these and then start to get a feel for it. And then as I progress through my work, it seems to uh, go, you know, get better or whatever. Like you just kind of get a, a feel for what you think looks like a chromey type effect, I guess. So now up here, I'll do a couple different things. Sometimes I'll do a 
bending line like this. Let's try this. And this to me is like, okay, there's a large, stronger highlight right here. See that? So that's what this bending line is uh, representing. And a lot of times I won't do this as a solid line. You can, I mean, it, it just depends on, you know, the way you're feeling that day, I guess. But uh, I think to make it look more like a bright light source, you could break up this line a little bit, something like that. And you could maybe even do like another, kind of like this little rounded, swirly, curly Q thing, and then a little highlight, I don't know, little dot there, whatever. So all I'm trying to paint the uh, idea of is that this is a stronger highlight. Maybe it's got a glare right here and another little chromey kind of swirl. And then sometimes I'll even do one like through here where maybe just one more random kind of line or something. I, I guess I, I'm really up in the air when I do stuff like this and whatever feels right, that's what I go for. And a lot of times I just hate blank space in my work. So I'll throw like some kind of little texture line. I don't even know if it's the right decision sometimes. I just feel the need to do it. So maybe something like, you know, you see I control Z back a lot and I kind of step back and look at it, you know, whatever. Um, I don't know that I even like it, but I'll leave it for now. I'll just kind of keep looking at it. Okay, now the other thing is, like, then I'll get to a point like this and I'll, I'll look at it and go, okay, this still doesn't feel that chromey or rounded. One of the things that's bothering me is this this heavy line here. Now, I could call this a bounced light, a bounced uh, light or rim light, but it just looks a little too, just too perfect and, and rounded with the bottom of it. It just doesn't remind me of what I think you would see there. So how to fix that? Like I could picture that, okay, maybe it rounds to the edges more like this. So I'll fill this in, see if that looks right. And another thing to kind of paint the picture a little more, let me add a layer when I do this. Hold shift, go across and add like a table or a back, you know, a line in the background. Erase this. Something like that. And then let's drop a shadow onto whatever surface this is. Just say it's a table of some kind. Or a ground plane. And you know, then you can get in there, you can do some fancy cross hatching or whatever. And it would, to me, it would obviously appear darker right beneath the uh, immediate surface. And then you'd cross hatch out, maybe separate the lines, and you'd start to get a, a lightened area to the very edge. And Command Shift T, and I'll maybe distort the. Oh, wait a second. Got them both selected there, I don't want that. Command Shift T. We distort that shadow into place a little bit. It's felt like it looked crooked to the scene. Okay, so now, hit Enter, Command D. All right, now let me zoom back a little bit and kind of look at that. All right, so it's kind of there, it's, it's still not, well, let me look at the character I did here. Yeah, see there, I was kind of feeling the flow a little bit more, I think. Feeling the flow, working it. Okay, so like, you know, it just has a nicer feel there. So I, you know, I kind of got in the zone there and then I just kind of went with it. And a lot of times when I'm doing something and I feel like it's it's going the right way, I try to do most of the entire scene at the same time because it, uh, you know, you're in the zone or whatever. You just want to make sure that you get as much of that down as you can. So I'm not saying this is bad. It still conveys kind of a chromey look, but it's not as impressive. Um, or as well done, I guess if I put them side by side, we can see what the difference might be. Okay, so I think one of the major, major parts, like right here on her, you know, area, um, it's got like a nicer flow right there, and then it comes and it connects, and it goes around. It, it really pushes the roundedness right there. This is almost more aligned with what I did over here, 
and yeah again the lines come together so maybe it's this bit of separation right there so let's try that let's try to bring this in maybe I've just got too much separation one of the things I noticed that uh, Soriyama does really well and you know he's a master at it he's, obviously his books are he's got full books uh, revolved around just this topic um, he does like these little in-between areas that are really cool too. So like say right here, he might shade this just right. Or, you know, I, I don't think that looks right. But he, you'll have to study his work and see what I'm talking about. He shades inner areas and then colors them with uh, a lot of times this area will be like earth tones and stuff to really make it look chromey. So you'll do like a, a light blue or a white up here, a light blue and a horizon color. So you've got like white light blue a little bit darker down here you'll have some earth tones and uh, i think it'll go back to kind of uh, gray tones down here you just got to play around with it but just again remembering that you're just essentially making the effect that the horizon is reflecting into your your shape All right, still, you know, I think one of the things that's making it look kind of funny, let me merge these down real quick, Command E, uh, is that I've got too much of it that's the same kind of thickness. You definitely want a nice heavier area, and then you want some thinner lines kind of bending around it. And you kind of see that here. There's a heavy line through the middle, a couple thinner lines, and maybe a heavier line with the shadowing at the base. And I'm thinking maybe this shape right here is bothering me too. Let me see if I can... Do something different with this. And that, that rim light or edge light is still bothering me. Let's just thin that right down. Yeah, I think that's better. I think it needs to be just barely there. Um, or what it can be is at the bottom like this, maybe I thicken the shadow right here and then come back with the white again. If you watch my stuff, you know I love painting back with white. And then maybe some cross hatching right here with the white. Might really help that round out. Yeah, see, I'm, I think I'm liking that a bit better. You know, as simple as that is. Um, and the other thing that bothers me a bit is there this evenly thick line right there. I don't think that would be there. I kind of like how it blends down a little bit more there. So I'd probably maybe take the white and try to round this bit. You know, different directions too, just to just make it look like the shadows and the highlights are swirling around the object a bit more. And then you can get in there and do just tiny little details too, just uh, little bits of line work. Not nothing. You don't want to get too busy with it, but just a little bit. Yeah. So something like that, and then you just keep elaborating from there. You know, you can take your background and shade it out. Um, just remember that, you know, you're basically trying to trick the eye. You're working off a 2D surface and trying to make things that look three-dimensional. So you're, it's going to sound silly, but you're a bit of a, a magician, really. You're just kind of tricking the eye. So the more you start to think like that, the better your drawings will get because you'll quit um, thinking so much into a you know, you, you know you're working in a 2D environment, but you start realizing that a lot of this is just kind of uh, distortion and effects and things like that. And you, I don't know, I think you start coming up with better concepts of how to draw it. So there you go. That is how to do a chromey kind of comic booky look. And uh, just keep going back and forth with uh, light and dark messing around and, and seeing what you can come up with 
Now obviously I could take this and refine it and clean it up even further. This is just kind of a rough sketch of the idea. But I don't want to bore you with hours and hours of making a chrome ball like surface. Um, but this is the same thing that I think when I do something like this and I had some questions about when creating this character uh, how I was doing the armor. That's that's all of it in a nutshell right there. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. It always helps me progress the channel, and I thank you for that. I thank you for being part of this channel and tuning in. And as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and we will talk to you soon.